Hello everyone. In this video, I will explain uh, what is the impact of uh, noise, that is, uh, let us say, a additive wide Gaussian noise on different analog modulation techniques. I'll start with the basics and I'll take up uh, the first type of uh, analog modulation, that is, uh, DSB SSE receiver. That means if I use a DSB SSE receiver and if I demodulate the signal, okay, the transmitted signal, what is the impact of noise on such signals? The noise will be usually added in the channel, as you all know. Most of the channel know, like additive wide Gaussian noise, which is additive in nature, which is added in the ch channel on my signal, the DSB SSC signal. So when it is demodulated, uh, what is the impact? Okay, and how to measure different uh, types of receivers based on uh, the performance, noise performance? Like you know, we have a term called figure of merit. So I'll start with uh, the definitions of uh, this figure of merit, signal to noise ratio. Okay. And then I'll go to the main topic that is noise in the DSB SSC receiver. Now, to begin with, this is a simple block diagram of uh, a uh, receiver, a general uh, block diagram you can say, where uh, this is the channel, let us consider, where now I have transmitted a modulated signal and in the channel, the noise W of T, which is considered to be a additive white Gaussian noise, which has uh, the power spectral density of N0 by 2 with a zero mean, is actually added. Okay, so it is a additive white Gaussian noise. It's a white Gaussian noise because the distribution is Gaussian and white because, uh, you know, as it resembles uh, the spectrum, the spectrum will be, you know, like, or you can say the PSD, the power spectral density is actually a not by 2 over the entire spectrum. It resembles a white light. Okay, and it is additive in nature. So this S of T plus W of T will be the input for my receiver. So in the front end of the receiver, I will be having a bandpass filter, which is uh, you know, having a response, something like this, okay, the response, that is, it is centered around the cent carrier frequency with the overall bandwidth of 2W hertz, if it is double sideband full carrier case, okay, it is used to allow only the carrier frequency with a very small bandwidth of 2W hertz. So, let us say that bandwidth is BT. And when, when noise is also enters such type of filter, it will be having a PSD, which is given by SN of F at the output of the filter, which is given by again n not by 2 because the PSD is n not by 2 but it is restricted within only the bandwidth of the bandpass filter or the pass band of the bandpass filter and that x of t is nothing but let us say it is s of t that are now received the signal with let us consider the output of uh, the signal the bandpass filter as n of t okay so n of t is the noise available say n of t is the noise available at the output of bandpass filter it's an additive white Gaussian noise which has the uh, you know, the PSD equal to N0 by 2 within this particular bandwidth, okay, that is 2W hertz, fine. So, this signal is given as input for a demodulator and demodulator can be of any type. It can be an envelope detector like we use in a double sideband full carrier kind of transmission or it can be a coherent demodulator like, you know, in case of double sideband suppressed carrier or it can be given a FM demodulator, okay, that is the signal is, received signal is frequency modulated signal. Fine. So, now let us uh, go to the few terms which uh, now we need to understand before going into the, uh, you know, the noise performance or you can say the impact of noise on a DSBSC. Now, just look at this. See, the noise is a filtered noise, so which is, you now goes actually through this particular filter as I told, okay, through this particular filter, okay, this noise is a bandpass kind of signal. So, any bandpass kind of signal can be represented in the form of a in-phase component and the quadrature component by using this equation. That is, N of t, which is a filtered noise, N of t, additive white Gaussian noise, as we are referring, N i of t cos 2 pi fct minus N q of t sin 2 pi fct. Now, this along with the modulated signal, that is S of t, the sum of the two signals, that is S of t and N of t, will be the input for my demodulator, right? So, N of t and this S of t plus S of t will be the input for demodulator. demodulator. Now, so, I can say that X of t is nothing but it is S of t plus N of t. Okay, now we have to calculate what is the average noise power. So, because of this N of t, what is the average noise power we actually receive in the uh, output of the bandpass filter. Okay, now, so how to find that uh, average noise power is nothing but it is the total area under the curve of the PSD, that is SN of F. Now, the PSD is available between minus W2 plus W, yeah? that is FC minus W2 plus FC plus FW actually. But it is the overall bandwidth is of 2 W hertz, right? Is that it? If I shift it by using the frequency shifting property, in that case, I will get somewhere here, right? Just one second. One second. Let me erase uh, these things. Fine. So, 
Now, if I shift it by using a frequency shifting property, it is between minus W to plus W. That's what I'll get, right? With a spectrum of N0 by 2, correct? Now, if I use this and if I calculate the, the area under the curve of this, the area under the curve will be, it is the most common method of calculating is the integral of, the area under the curve means it is the integral between minus W to plus W of Sn of F. That is Sn of F. So, this is what we have to calculate. So, Sn of F is Sn0 by 2, okay, which is constant. And uh, this turns out to be 2 times Bt, okay, that's the overall bandwidth what we have taken over there, multiply by the n not by 2, okay. So, that is B, minus Bt to plus Bt, you can say here, because I, I used the notation Bt over here, minus Bt to plus Bt, you can say, and it comes out to be uh, uh, n not into Bt. So, that is the average noise power, okay, at the demodulator input or at the output of the bandpass filter. Now, let us define a term called signal to noise ratio in the input, okay. So, in the input of the receiver, so that is, a signal, whatever you have is input signal is nothing but it's the modulated signal. So, modulated, this we have the uh, signal to noise ratio means it is the ratio of signal power to the noise power, right? So, just consider here, it is the average power of the modulated signal, which is my signal, okay? And divided by, it is the average power of the filtered noise, which is NOT at the input of the demodulator. Now, what is output signal to noise ratio? That is measured at the output of the demodulator, that is, average power of the mod demodulated signal, which is my message signal actually in the output. So, after demodulation, we get the message signal, right? So, it is the average power of the demodulated signal, then divided by average power of the noise, which is measured at the receiver output. So, these two uh, terms are important, especially the output signal to noise ratio. Now, we have to calculate, suppose you want to find out what is the figure of merit is, say, figure of merit is the term or a parameter which is used to compare the performance of these, uh, uh, you know, different systems, okay, in the analog uh, modulation systems, okay. So, based on this, so basically, uh, usually, uh, this figure of merit will be maybe less than 1, it can be equal to 1 or it can be more than 1 also, okay. But higher the value of that figure of merit, better the performance of the receiver uh, in the presence of noise. So, if it is more than 1, then it is good. Less than 1 or equal to 1 is not good, you can say. Okay, uh, yeah, so now, what is figure of merit? The figure of merit is something but it is a signal to noise ratio in the output of the demodulator divided by signal to noise ratio in the ch uh, channel, okay, C means channel. So, this is what we have heard. So, now, we have to define SNR in the channel. So, what is the signal available in the channel? The signal available in the channel is a modulated signal, right? So, it is the average power of the modulated signal in the channel divided by average power of the noise in the message bandwidth, that is between, say, minus W to plus W. So, that's what we have to calculate. Now, now I will go to the first case that is uh, we will uh, uh, derive an equation for figure of merit in case of uh, double sideband suppressed carrier receiver. So, I am using a coherent detection technique here, okay. So, the same model, I have a, a adder here where the noise will be added, additive white Gaussian noise, I pass it through a bandpass filter which is used to allow only the SOFT centered at FC, fine. And this is now the demodulator. So, which is a coherent detector, okay. The input for this is X of t, the output of the product modulator is V of t, this is the carrier where this magnitude is taken as 1, the amplitude of uh, carrier is taken as 1, normalized it and a low, a pass, passing through a low pass filter, I have to get back the uh, message signal M of t there, I am estimating a M of t, okay. But there is an impact of noise also, that is what we need to analyze. Now, how you uh, write the equation for modulated signal S of t? The S of t is something but it is AC cos 2 pi FCT multiply by M of t, right? Whenever you multiply a carrier with a message signal, the output will be always double set than suppressed carrier signal. But in this case, I have taken a one more term here, that is of C, which is nothing but it is a scaling factor, fine? Now, we have to calculate what is the power of, uh, average power of the signal, okay? Then we have to calculate what is the average power of the noise, fine? So, then we will calculate what is the channel signal to noise ratio is. So, we have to identify what is the signal to noise ratio in the channel, what is the signal to noise ratio in the output of the uh, you know, receiver or demodulator, then take the ratio which will give you FOM, that is figure of merit. Now, we will start with the channel first, okay. So, in the channel, the signal is pr uh, present, available. So, what is the average uh, power of this? It is nothing but, how do you calculate the average power? Power is nothing but, it is P is equal to, just me, uh, let me change the ink uh, color here, yeah, so that I can see it properly in my video. So, power P is nothing but it is power P is actually equal to or you can say it is proportional to let us say V square, okay, uh, by R, right. If it is normalized, let us say R is equal to 1, in that case the power is nothing but it is proportional to V square, right. Now, here 
uh, voltage, whatever you know, we have over in this case in the equations are nothing but they are the peak powers. So we have to convert that into the RMS value. So power P is proportional to in terms of RMS voltage, it is V uh, divided by root 2, right, whole square, that is V square by 2, right, that is the equation for power, is it right? So in this case, we have a amplitude of this cosine carrier which is given by just one second. Yeah, the power, uh, sorry, the amplitude of this cosine carrier, okay, is given by, it is C into AC multiplied by M of T. So, as this M of T changes, the amplitude of this carrier also changes. That's what the meaning of double sideband suppressed carrier is, right? So, uh, so according to this equation, if I write a uh, average power, in that case, it is C square, AC square by 2, and we have uh, also the message component, right, the message signal. Let us consider this uh, power of uh, message signal as P, okay? So, in that case, the average power of the DSB ACC signal is given by C square AC square by 2 into P, where P is the power of the message signal, which is actually given by, you can say, power P is nothing but it is P is equal to, it is AM square by 2, according to the same formula which I am using, right, a simple formula, AM square divided by 2. So, instead of writing AM square by 2, let us say it is equal to P. So, whenever you see a P in my derivation, it is nothing but it is related to the power of the message signal, okay. Now, so this is the formula for the average power uh, of the DSB SEC modulated signal. Now we have to calculate what is the average power of the noise in the message bandwidth, right? Which is given by W N naught. Okay. So how to do that? Just one second. Yeah. So I have uh, within the message bandwidth. Let us say the N naught by two is the uh, you know the PSD of the noise. Okay. Again, we have to calculate area under the curve between the message bandwidth. That is w minus W two plus W. So it is integration of again that N naught by two. Okay within the message bandwidth now. It is minus W2 plus W. So, when I calculate this, I will get the answer as N0 into W. Okay. Now, I know what is the average power of the noise, average power of the modulated signal. Then take a ratio of uh, the modulated signal to the uh, noise. In that case, I will get the answer as C square AC square P divided by 2 times uh, N0 W. So, that is the channel signal to noise ratio. Now, the uh, thing is, we have to calculate what is the signal to noise ratio in the output of the receiver. So, for that, let us go to the next slide. Now, see, uh, I said output uh, signal to noise ratio. So, what the input for that uh, receiver is something it is S of T plus N of T, right? Now, well, I will substitute this S of T and N of T in this equation. What is S of T? S of T is nothing but it is this part, correct? C into AC cos 2 pi FCT into M of T. What is N of T? It is a bank pass kind of signal basically in terms of in phase and quadrature component if I write it, it is Ni of T cos 2 pi FCT minus NQ of T sine 2 pi FCT. Now, so this signal is actually later multiplied by using a, I just go back to the slide here, oh yeah. So that X of T is actually multiplied by cos 2 pi FCT here, right? That will be V of T, correct? So then passing through a low pass filter. So just I multiply by that uh, carrier, okay? X of T is multiplied by a cos 2 pi FCT. If I, if I substitute uh, this, uh, see, uh, you know, the previous equation, this particular equation here, okay? Then I, if I simplify it, Okay, then somewhere you have to apply a cos of, uh, you know, alpha plus, uh, uh, you know, 2 cos, uh, say, cos of alpha plus beta, cos of alpha minus beta. So, this formula, trigonometric rule, you have to apply. So, which I have not shown in my derivation. Please, substitute uh, this, multiply by cos. So, you get cos of, uh, you know, C, C into AC, uh, cos 2 pi FCT into M of T, cos 2 pi FCT. Cos square theta rule, you actually have, you will get. Uh, okay, then uh, you have to multiply this with uh, this, right? Then, finally, after simplification, just use that mathematical uh, trigonometric uh, formulas, okay, after, uh, upon uh, simplification, what I will get is this particular formula, that is half of C into AC M of T plus half of NIT, NI of T plus half of C into AC M of T plus NI of T cos 4 pi FCT minus half of AC into NQ of T sine 4 pi, 4 pi FCT, okay. Now, we need to identify two uh, terms here because this signal at V of T is given to the low pass filter. So, the function of the low pass filter is allow, to allow only the low pass component. So, in this particular case, the low pass component is this, right, where we have a message signal and NI of T is the uh, in-phase part or you can say it's a low pass version of uh, the in-phase part, right. So, this is nothing but with this particular magnitude, we have cos 4 pi FCT and this particular magnitude, we have sin 4 pi FCT, which is a 2 FC component. So, it's a high frequency component. So, my low pass filter, when I pass this through a low pass filter, only the uh, first part, okay, which I highlighted over here, okay, this part, only this part will be allowed by the low pass filter. That's what I'll get. Now, this is the available signal in the output of the uh, demodulator. Now, what I'm expecting is in the absence of the noise, 
this term will be equal to 0 and y of t is simply equal to or you can say proportional to m of t. So, that means my message signal is recovered. But since there is a noise also, the impact of the noise also, we have got the second term that is half of ni of t. Okay. Now, the thing is to find this output signal to noise ratio or the signal to noise ratio measured at the output of the receiver or demodulator, we have to calculate what is the average power of the message component, what is the average power of the noise component. Okay. So, the first part is this as I told. Okay. Uh, the second part is this. Now, I have explained already about this. Okay. Uh, now, we have to calculate what is the average power. Right. So, I again have taken the same equation over here. This is the message part. Same rule, okay. Average average power of the message signal is 30, but it is the 1 by 4 c square ac square. This is replaced as p. So I know what is the average power is okay. Average noise power. We need to calculate average noise power now. So to calculate this again, okay, what we have to do is we have uh, you know this uh, just one second, let me change the ink here. Yeah, so I have uh, the band pass filter representation, okay. And not by two was the input for I mean this and not by two, and this was the input for my receiver right if i apply a frequency shifting property so this level is actually you can say n not by 2 n not by 2 if i apply a frequency shifting property okay but if i shift this and as well as this okay by fc if amount equal to fc in that case this will be equal to minus w2 plus w okay extending between minus w2 plus w because this is uh, fc minus w part this is fc plus w part right when i shift by say fc if this will be minus w, this will be plus w with a magnitude overlapped spectrum. So, this spectrum and this spectrum is overlapped n not by 2 plus n not by 2 will be equal to n naught. Okay, this will be n naught. So, in that case, I, I want to find out what is the area under the curve of this. Again, the same method, integral of uh, whatever you say, na, minus w2 plus w, right, of n naught. n naught is a constant you take outside, okay. Then, what answer we will get is, it is, it is equal to 2 times w n naught, okay. And uh, this also, we have a half here, right. Because of this half, I have to take a square, right? Because I am converting that into the, this is the voltage part. I have to convert that into the power. That is V square by uh, 2 rule, right? So, 1 by 2 whole square, 2 times W n naught. So, we have calculated the power, but this constant, we have to take a square of that. That is 1, one by 2 square, okay? 2 W n naught. That's what I will get, okay? So, uh, finally, ultimately, we get the equation as W n naught by 2. So, average power, average power in the output of the receiver is given by, half of w n naught. So, I know what the signal power is, what is noise power is, okay. I want to find out this signal to noise ratio in the output of the dsb -SCC receiver, which is the ratio of this to this, that is c square s square p by 4 divided by w n naught by 2, which comes out to be c square s square p by 2 times w n naught. So, now I know what is signal to noise ratio in the output. I have already derived uh, what is the signal to noise ratio. I will go back to the previous slide, just one second. Yeah. So, in this case, I know what is the signal to noise ratio in the channel. So, both are actually same, right? Is that it? Just compare the equations, both are actually same. Just one second. Let me erase uh, this. Yeah. So, yes, now just get this. So, signal to noise ratio in the output of the uh, receiver and the channel, the equation, the terms are same. Now, I calculate what is the figure of merit is. It is nothing but it is the ratio of SNR at the output to SNR in the channel. Since the terms are same, figure of merit will come out to be. 1. Okay. So, the DSP SEC receiver has a figure of merit not more than 1, it is equal to 1. So, it is in terms of uh, the performance, the presence of noise, it is not that so good. Okay. Because it is not equal, not more than 1 in this case. So, in this video, I have explained uh, what is figure of merit is. Okay. How to calculate figure of merit. And first case, that is DSP SEC receiver. So, using this DSP SEC receiver, uh, how to derive an equation for figure of merit and what will be the figure of merit. So, it is unity. The figure of merit is actually unity for DSB-SC receiver. Okay. So, thank you for watching this video.